how to keep discus that's a very commonly asked question to me since i've started this channel so stay tuned Hi guys, I'm Rahul and welcome back to Frapper Aqua. So this is a very very long pending video which uh, I have been planning for very long. Uh, after a lot of uh, questions and answers and a lot of uh, new people whom I have spoken to, uh, there are a lot of commonly asked questions uh, like about how to keep discus being the biggest question. Uh, then uh, you're getting into the tank size, tank mates, what is the ideal size to buy, where to buy them. uh water condition water parameters uh things to have before we start keeping discus and um lots of them so a lot of things i have written down uh so let's get started i am not taking a break okay yeah this is going to be a very long video uh so bear with me because there are so many things to be covered and uh, i thought i'll make it in parts but the whole problem with making it parts is some people don't get to see the other part and they say where is that part this is not there that is not there so i'm going to list out everything in the description of this video also uh, so bear with me it's a little long video okay so starting off first thing uh, tank size ideally for uh, keeping discus if you're starting off fresh uh, with discus uh, you need to at least start off with a minimum of 100 to 120 liter tank so i would say about a 2 feet by 18 inches or 20 or 2 feet by 1 and 1/2 by 1 and 1/2 kind of a tank size uh, about 100 to 120 liters because they need some space and you know disc is actually becomes really big in size this is just a start okay so if you are uh, uh, planning to keep disc for a long run and that is the plan i would uh, recommend like a tank size right behind me which is about 3 and 1/2 feet by 18 by 18 it holds about 220 liters of water so this is a good tank size to start off with so next we to get into how many discs you can you should minimum keep at least 6 discs is what i would personally recommend because discs are schooling fishes so they like to be in uh, more around in groups so i would generally prefer to buy the same variety so that they uh, they are all together and they get to get along well faster uh but there are you can mix and buy stuff like that but uh six i would say bare minimum to buy uh discus so and if you're starting for the first time ideal size 2 inches 2 and 1/2 inches plus don't buy juveniles or very small discus they have a very poor immunity uh they take a very long time to get used to you know your setup and stuff like that so i would generally say 2 and 1/2 to 3 inches plus works are a little expensive but then they take uh, that's much more easier for them to settle in your uh, tank so that is about the disc size uh, the ideal uh, tank size or uh, if you see in uh, liters is like for a full grown disc you need uh, 30 liters per fish suppose you're keeping 10 fishes you need to have a minimum of uh, 300 liter aquarium for a full grown like 6 and 1/2 7 inches kind of size uh, or 8 inch size of uh, disc is you need at least 300 liters if you keeping 10 so ideal uh, this is rule of thumb i have read it somewhere uh, it is 30 liters basically it is 10 gallons per fish per disc is so if you convert it is almost about 30 liters yeah uh next we talk about the tank there's big controversy or not controversy i would say it's like a big conversation like bare bottom tank or uh, ta you know planted aquarium or aquarium with the substrate and stuff like that so i personally like bare bottom because it is very easy to maintain the water parameters and uh, yeah it's very easy to maintain the water parameters and stuff but the problem what i see or what i think might happen with a planted aquarium or an aquarium with a substrate is that uh, as you all know that discus are bottom feeders so they like to eat their food from the bottom so we feed like heart makes we feed uh, blood worms we feed pellet food uh, worms lot of things and all these food generally if it's a discus based food they all come to the bottom so if you have a substrate or stones or things like that what happens is there is a possibility not a possibility is 100% possible that lot of the food will go into the substrate when they try to eat the food so that i uh 
over time you know uh, what happens is that the uh, food uneaten food goes into your soil and which might cause an ammonia spike and uh, which might eventually affect your fishes because of a sudden ammonia spike which can happen over time i'm not saying it will happen today tomorrow it might take a month uh, depending on the filtration what you have so like you would have seen videos where there are amazing planted aquariums and where there are uh, beautiful discs inside it but the you should also observe that their filtration is amazing they'll have an awesome sump system uh, underneath their tank where the filtration is continuous and the huge amount of media where through which the water is passing through and all that uh, that is how that fish tank is been handled you know the ammonia and all the water parameters is maintained but when you're starting off that is definitely going to be a big investment because firstly the fishes are expensive secondly uh, you know if you get into that kind of filtration if you can afford it nothing like it definitely so bare bottom i would i personally prefer bare bottom because it's more easier to clean out the tank and uh, you know uh, maintain the water parameters and stuff like that all my tanks uh, if you've seen are all uh, white in color so i stick a white sticker in the bottom of the tank from the outside white color vinyl sticker i made a lot of videos on that so uh, because that white uh, sticker why i stick it is because uh, if you don't stick a sticker and just keep it on thermocol uh, it forms kind of a mirror kind of an effect where there is a glare and stuff so as i was telling earlier uh, discs are bare i mean uh, bottom feeders they eat from the bottom so when they go to eat and stuff like that they kind of get little scared and stuff it's all in the initial stages not that it is a must it just helps you in uh, reducing their stress so i all my tanks are covered from all sides only the front glass is open so because uh, that's the best way i like it this is the only tank which have got black background the rest of all my tanks are in uh, you know uh, white background so the bottom back side sides all white white sticker so there's no glare they feel more cozy they feel good so if they feel good i feel good then uh, the most commonly asked question to me was about where to buy discs so there are lots of people uh, across india where uh, who sell discs uh, they are uh, retailers they are big breeders there are lots of them but personally what i like or i prefer is look for breeders uh, who are in and around uh, your area suppose i'm from bangalore so i basically will look for people who are uh, growing or breeding discs inside bangalore so that way it's more easier so that i can go and select my fish uh, you know the shape is one very important thing uh, with discs so you need to be very careful when you check out uh, you know uh, take the size or the shape when you try to select so when i said about 2 inches and 3 inches plus that is when you actually know the uh, the discs kind of forms their uh, shape so that is also a good uh, time and size to buy discs which i is telling don't buy too small ones because too small you cannot make out their color or you cannot make out their shape and size so yeah coming back to where to buy is basically because uh, look for people in and around your this you can join some maybe uh, a lot of there are a lot of facebook groups and a lot of whatsapp groups uh, you guys can join there make friends like i did i took about 2 years to make good friends across uh, india there are uh, a lot of people but i personally prefer to go see my fish which i want to buy because so then you know it's the, it's like there are a lot of people who ship uh, fishes across uh, all parts of our country but there is a small risk factor i am not completely against it i have bought fishes myself but there is a possibility where uh, in transport the cowks may get cut and there is a possibility of losing some fish and you are putting the fish through a lot of trauma i feel so it's my personal opinion it's not uh, it's nothing against anybody so uh, i personally prefer going and selecting your own fish is always better because uh, a lot for a lot of reasons you know you can also uh, check out their water parameters in what water they have been there till now uh, shape and size and you can uh, stress levels uh, for the fish are uh, very low when you put them the travel time and all is lowered so things like that you know basically whatever you can do to reduce the stress of your fish is just going to help them to settle faster in your uh, you know tank tank mates uh, for discus uh, personally i wouldn't like to add anything uh, with discus because uh, i just like discus so it's my personal opinion but a lot of people add neon te- neon tetras cardinal tetras some people uh, mix um, 
lot of different fishes which I would wouldn't recommend because uh, if any fish you are adding is quarantined for at least 45 to 50 days in a separate tank, then you add them, perfect, no issues. But again, there is a huge list of what fishes go get along with discus and what fishes don't get along with discus. So you need to go through that and find out. That's a huge list. Uh, I'll try and if I can share it across so that uh, there is a huge there is, It is available online. Please check uh, before you add any kind of fishes. Like mixing guppies and discus is a very bad idea because they come with a lot of parasite and stuff. So it's not very good. Uh, so quarantining any fish what you're keeping with discus is very very important. Not only discus, actually any fish for that matter. So adding anything new into your established aquarium, please quarantine them. Otherwise it's very very bad because the new fishes definitely will be carrying some parasite which might affect your entire setup. So please be very very careful when you're adding new fishes. Even it can be discus, it can be small neon tetras, can be any other fishes. If you're adding into your aquarium which is an established aquarium, Please be very very careful. Next thing being uh, a hospital tank or a quarantine tank or a breeding tank. You can call it anything. It's just a small aquarium which you need additionally just for uh, any kind of small treatment or uh, you know if you buy new fish like I just said, uh, said earlier uh, to quarantine them and all that. So always better to have a small tank that can be just about 18 inch by 18 inch by 18 inch. Just a cube tank is more than enough. But that is very, very important. So like I was telling, if you're having a group of fishes, uh, like a group of discus, and if you feel one or two fishes are not doing well and not eating or, you know, standing in the side or doing white poop, there are a lot of reasons why they may not be eating. So that, that time you need to shift them out into a separate place, so give them some time to settle. Uh, so that's why one more tank is very, very important. Again, all the bottom sides and back side covered with vinyl sticker. Uh, in that you don't need much of, uh, you know, you just need aeration and stuff. I made videos on setting up a hospital tank and stuff. So that one more tank is very important. A uh, lot of people don't have that tank just because of one fish. What happens is a lot of time people just treat the entire tank. So it's like saying, right, I don't have a problem and my neighbor has a problem. So why should I also get treated? That shouldn't happen. So if there is one or two fishes which is affected, so you have a place to separate them out and the discus you know can go through a lot of uh, treatments and stuff you can recover fish uh, with discus you know you, you can do a lot of treatments to get them back to speed but you need to have a separate tank so that is very very important if you're starting off i'm just telling you so two tanks is a must one big one one small one next is what you need to have apart from a fish tank is this this is a very very important thing it's a tds meter uh, basically it tells you the total dissolved uh, solids in the water what you're getting so there's a lot of people who use uh, hard water or borehole water or uh, use uh, tap water use ro water so the ideal tds i mentioned in a lot of my videos is between 100 to 150 for discus you can go up to 200 that's not an issue but ideal is inside 150 tds so this, this device is very very important, it's not very expensive, it is just about 200 bucks in Indian rupees. You get it online, you get it on Amazon. Get this, test your water first for TDS. If it is inside 150, well and good. Otherwise, if it is very very high, you need to mix uh, like tap water and RO and stuff like that. So that thing needs to be done. So this is a very important instrument or device, what we want to call it. Then there are small things like... Uh, to keep at home is potassium per magnet which is very very important for doing a pp dip or uh, setting up a new tank uh, i use that for all my aquariums i've made a lot of videos on the same uh, then there is something called epsom salt which is magnesium sulfate so this is basically if you if your fishes have got a bloated stomach and stuff this is good if you put into the aquarium one or two teaspoons so it kind of helps them in kind of clearing out just clearing out their system so Epsom salt is very good for that. So you don't need to do a proper metro treatment just to start off with just a little bit of high temperature and a little bit of Epsom salt should solve a basic small bloated stomach kind of an issue. Uh, you guys should try and get uh, you know uh, rock salt that is non-iodized uh, rock salt uh, because uh, what you get in the shops these days are all iodized rock salt. You get this uh, in the loose in the, in the market you know that's basically good for basically small treatment 
uh, in case your biscuits are not keeping well and all so maybe one or two teaspoons of that salt rock salt is very very uh, good for them but specifically speaking uh, no iodized non iodized rock salt is what we need to try and look and get uh, you easily available in uh, you know where there is a uh, uh sea and seashore and stuff so those are uh, it's commonly available there otherwise you get something like aquarium salt which is available but it's a little expensive but it's the same thing i feel it's just the same thing heater uh depending on where you are from uh, heater uh, tank temperature ideal tank temperature is about between 27 28 or 27 to 29 degrees so that is the ideal uh, tank temperature for discus they generally like a little warm water so a heater is a must depending on uh, where you are located uh, so to know if the heater is functioning well you need uh, a thermometer which actually tells you what is the temperature it is at i prefer analog kind of stuff i used to use only the uh, sorry only the digital ones before uh, previously but i had a big uh, issue with the uh, digital ones no offense uh what happens is when the battery goes low with the digital ones it kind of tends to show you some other uh, kind of reading so i generally prefer the analog one which i showed you can also use the typical uh, thermometer kind of a thing stuck to the glass on the inside so you know the exact uh, tank uh, you know tank uh, water temperature so it's very important tank ideal tank temperature is uh, for discussions between 27 to 29 during treatment above 30 plus then we get into the filtration what you guys need uh, if you want to start off a discus tank basically you can just start off with a sponge filter something like this it's very commonly available uh, in any aquarium shop so this is a sponge filter it needs an air pump you can put an air pump and uh, start using it uh, so the uh, tank needs to be cycled at least for 15 20 days or maybe 30 days uh before you add in fishes so that the sponge filter gets established so if you are going for a 3 feet tank like mine you one sponge filter alone is not important i mean not enough you need to have at least another alternative uh, filtration you can do uh, use a canister filter or you can use a hang on filter like i have made a video already on it so filtration is important depending on the tank size if you going with a 2 feet tank two uh, two sponge filters like this is good and uh, never uh, put a sponge filter today and tomorrow add the fishes never any fish for that matter is not at all advisable the uh, tank needs to be properly established so you need to either use uh, you know something like sea cam stability or quick start or some there are a lot of products available online for uh, quick starting aquariums so you can use products like that even after adding those you need to cycle the tank without a fish for at least 15 to 30 days is very very important especially fishes like discus very expensive fishes don't simply go and add fishes they might definitely face problems was uh, if you're using uh, like i said a two feet kind of an aquarium uh, two sponge filters are good but if you're using going to buy a hang on filter or a canister filter the ideal size to look for in a canister filter is uh, suppose your tank is 200 liters your canister filter should have at least five times the uh, output per hour so that is about close to 1000 liters 2200 liters per hour should be the water flow inside your filter that is when there is an ideal circulation in your or ideal filtration for any aquarium for that matter so five times or seven times or sometimes even 10 times depending on the tank size if your tank is really big if you are talking about a huge tank you need that kind of a filtration where per hour it is at least five times your entire uh, tank volume or water capacity right so yeah then i have also uh, one more <laughs> important thing would be you need an aging tank uh, or a container where you can age at least uh, 50% water uh, for uh, for your water changes so i would never recommend uh, adding water directly into the aquarium so suppose your water tank uh, suppose your fish tank is about 200 liters i would say at least a 100 liter storage tank is very important i have made videos on water conditioning i will leave the link in the description and also on top if i can because there are so many topics which i am talking about in this video so yeah then uh, 
we when you get into water conditioning like i mentioned earlier about tds and if you're using tap water and stuff these days there's a lot of mixing in the tap water what comes to us so back in the days there was only chlorine which was added but nowadays there's a lot of chlorine chloramines a lot of kind of different chemicals which are added into the water so i use this very uh, i've been using this for very long secam prime it's an amazing product for dechlorination it removes even ammonia nitrate nitrite it will remove even chloramines you can look for it online it's available secam prime good product for water conditioning so i made videos on water conditioning how to age water and stuff like that oh, and your discus tank uh, should always have a cover uh, a roof because these guys are jumpers so they come to the side of the glass and they'll jump so it needs to have a roof if you leave it open these guys will jump in fall out no gaps especially the corners have to be completely covered so a uh, roof for all the tanks all discus tanks are very very important these guys are jumpers so that's very important so lighting basically for a discus tank is not very important like i made uh, these lights myself these are all like diy led blocks i made videos on how to uh, make uh, these kind of lights so it's pretty good output i mean they don't like very bright light so all my tanks are like that if you see that i've just used led blocks and uh, made the lighting it's pretty decent so you don't need a uh, major lighting uh, for discus so you guys can get ready made uh, lights but this is what i've used so it's about it of course you need light because that's when you can have a look at these beauties <laughs> Siphons is also very important, uh, especially when you have a bare bottom tank. Uh, I have mentioned this in my earlier videos also. Uh, so separate siphons for uh, separate tanks. It's always like that. I mean, I never mix my siphons because uh, water is something which uh, you know carries. If there is some parasite somewhere and stuff. So anyway, separate siphons for separate tanks. That's about it. No using common siphons. That is my thumb rule. So if you follow it, it will be good. and uh, i always uh, wash my hand before i put my hand into from one tank to other another tank i never uh, you know that's a little uh, crazy but yeah, i always do it so i always wash out my hand if i put my hand into this tank before i put my hand into this tank i always wash my hand wash my hand as in at least with fresh water wash it only after that i put my hand in the other tanks so never try i mean avoid mixing uh, water from any tank maybe they're all established and fine but still avoid that's something i do this is an api fresh water test kit uh, which i picked up when i faced big issues uh, with uh, my fish tank uh, with my discus tank when i started off i had a lot of issues uh, with my fish tanks so when you have multiple tanks and uh, different things happening uh this is good so you can actually check the exact ammonia levels nitrite nitrate uh you can check ph uh, all of that comes with this it's a little expensive cost me about 2700 or 2400 not sure sometime back i picked it up so that is useful if you are doing getting into this whole thing very seriously and if you feel there is a problem with the water uh and uh, stuff like that so this is it's not a must but i mean i have it because uh, i had it faced big issues so i was taking water and going and testing water from different places so that is when i thought i should have it myself so that is why i have it uh, so it's not a must but so hope you guys like this video if you did give us a thumbs up like and share our videos i know this was a very long video so please bear with me i told this in the earlier earlier stage also when i started this video but i hopefully i have covered most of the uh, questions or things which came off uh from what ever i thought for quite some time so uh, please do subscribe to our channel and support us there'll be an icon to be coming up somewhere here and uh, this hobby guys is really fun if you do it the right way cheers